And the love is so powerful in times of misery because of the great love in you. I want to explore it. I want to really release it. I really do. But I'm going to have the occasion to do it as God desires us to receive Him. Mm -hmm. He will release all of His love. But we won't really receive Him because of various issues yet that we're involved in. I mean, I'm not talking about sin even. I'm talking about we haven't fully given us a vote because of cares. Mm -hmm. The very cares of this life. Yes. And so, truth and the cares we, we get so concerned but this is where it's so necessary to stay before God mentally and on your knees. When you bow down before Him in, in sincerity, He's waiting for you to cast your cares on Him. He's waiting for that. I'm telling you. He's waiting for you to cast your cares on Him. He's waiting for that. And then He would, he would actually release Himself to you. He would do that. His very self, His very presence, He would release it to you that you can express yourself to him. And he's listening to you. He's actually listening. He's listening. I'm, I'm not, I speak from experience. I'm speaking from the walk that he's caused me to walk in. Mm -hmm. Are you understand? Mm -hmm. walk. Um, can I do something today? I'm going to take an uh, offering right now. And I said there's a reason for it. Because, um, we said we needed, what, $1,600 last Sunday, so we said we need, we probably need more than that on him. So, I'm going to take the offering this year. And, and in the New Testament, and I, I'm going to share all over the world, it's all about giving because you love. Mm -hmm. The church was edified itself, not outside the church, the believers, was edified itself, what? In love. Mm -hmm. um, and if we would, God always had more than enough among the believers to do His will. Always, if I understand the scriptures correctly, if I understand, if I see, there's always sufficiency. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when you do it God's way, teach. In Philippians 4, Paul wrote to the church of Philippi, and he was admonishing them that they cared for him and flourished again. Read it for yourself, down of my. It, it had flourished again, okay? It had flourished again. He said, not that I speak to you uh, uh, because I want you. He said, I'm full. Understand? He said, I'm full. Wow. But then he, he wrote to them, he said, but my God, listen to the pastor, but my God shall supply all, watch this now, listen, but my God shall supply all your need. But watch, watch the clause. According, now, now this clause is going to open up the how and the why. See, the statement, but my God says about all your need. Now here come, here come the clause giving definition to what was spoken. Now we understand. Mm -hmm. According, that's what we have to understand. We will most of understand this verse we going to teach. Whew. But my God says for all you need. And they stop right there. And without understanding what is meant after the word according. According to his riches. So the Holy Spirit got to reveal it to us. What is God's riches? Because it, it was he, he wrote teach. He wrote but my God shall supply. Now he that was a very person. He said, My God. Mm -hmm. Understand? So he had experience with God. That's what he said. My God shall supply. That was very personal. Okay. <laughs> Just for all according to his riches. So we have to we have to uh, he has to reveal what are his riches in glory. We are not to understand what is and where is glory. Mm -hmm. According to his riches in glory. By the anointed one. By the man who was the Christ. So that has nothing to do about what you see. It has nothing to do about money. According to his riches and glory. So glory is heaven. Okay? It's 
heavenly places. So when 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 if you please hear me, according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So with that, what are his riches that's coming out of heaven to supply what you need? Are you hearing? What are his riches that's coming out? Now, amen. Now let me go all the way back as he ministered to me to Solomon. The Lord God. You shall. The Lord God gave Solomon a dream. Understand? Gave him a dream, a real one. And, 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 and then he asked Solomon, what you want me to do for you? I mean, he left it wide open. What you want me to do for you? I'm, I'm still tired of that according to his riches and glory. Mm -hmm. So he said, and, and, and Solomon gave his answer. And, and then the Lord God said, because you did ask for. See, Solomon asked for something that was not tangible. Anything you could see. Anything you could eat. Anything you could build. He didn't ask for anything that pertained to man. <laughs> he asked for that which he would cause him to be a good king toward the kingdom. And, and I said, you didn't ask for a long life, another man's life, you didn't ask for riches, but here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to make you rich. Now watch this coming, the word of the Lord, okay? The word of the Lord. I'm going to make you rich, richer than any king before or after you. He didn't give him no money. He didn't give him any gold. He didn't give him any oil. He didn't give him any silver oil. Now, this, we got to take on this same mind and this same understanding. It's left there for us to see. Romans 15, 4, what's been written before time. So we can learn from the, what's already written, how, what God is expecting of us. Because he gave us a, a legacy to go by. How he actually operates. Mm. That's a straight <laughs> it's just great. But you have to be converted yes, to trust in it yes, at the point of your need. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. you, you must have a relationship, otherwise the, the need, the care is going to choke because you're going to go by the way of the humanity trying to do all in Jesus' name. Yes, you understand? The borrower is a servant unto the limit, is a slave. So God doesn't expect for us to become a slave uh, in his name, saying that this is God. This word washing us. This is a washing word. This is a washing word. But it, it's going to put you into a place of dependency on Him. It's going to put you in a place of dependency. That's holy. You hear it? It's good. When you get truth and you hear it, sets you free from the way of man, from the way of the flesh, from the way of tradition. It sets you free even from other ministers and pastors and teachers. It sets you free. Very few people are walking in the depth that God would have you to walk in. Mm -hmm. Revelation said that the depth of Satan's wickedness, that means you have to go deep in through your meditation. Mm -hmm. You can't just hear it and go, no, no, no. You, you have to give yourself over to, to meditate to go deep to where God actually is. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The Spirit says you need the deep things. So in order, to, in order to the deep things to come, you've got to go deep. How do you do that? By focusing your mind continuously and pondering that thing continuously to go where the revelations are. Are you understand? To go where the revelations are. Because the Spirit of God says, yeah, what? Yea, the deep thing. So hearing it, it ain't deep. And some only hear a sound, the Bible tells me. And they're worried with it to the end. Uh -huh. But some hear a sound. A sound went out. But then the word goes to the end of the So the difference is you hear a sound, but are you hearing the word? Mm -hmm. You hear you hear a sound, but are you actually hearing the word that gives identity to that sound? So, this is what, 
This is why it's written, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And only the body of Christ can hear the Spirit. Others hear a sound. Man, the revelation of God come out of my mouth. The Lord talking to us out of my mouth right now. I mean right now. Huh? This is why the Spirit of God had John the He didn't have an ear to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the body. Not congregation, body. Uh, there's a difference in the congregation. Anybody can come to in the, be in the congregation. But only those who have been baptized in them is in the church. And there ain't no flesh in the church. It's only spirits in the church. We are members. We are. We are. We are. Paul, Paul wrote so many, many revelations. Many. Until he had to be buffeted because of the revelations. Right? And so when you read the epistles that he wrote, the Holy Spirit has to take your deep thought and give life to what this man wrote. And so otherwise, it's just a dead letter. Now, if I teach just what I see, I can cause more harm than good. That's why the Bible said the letter kills. And there are many just uh, teaching and preaching by their natural knowledge. Yes. You know, they can define the Greek, the Hebrew, the Latin. You understand? The English, they can define it. So they can, they can homiletically do it very well. They can do it very, very well. Except you have knowledge of God, you'll be taken in too. Yes.